What it do, pig feet? <laughs> it's me, Keisha, aka Color Me Pink. And I'm here with this week's All Tea All Shade, Kiki Wyatt's World Season 1, Episode 1 Review. Sorry I'm getting this video up late. I had a busy weekend. I went to go see Beetlejuice the play at the Fox, and it was fantabulous. I had to get this wig done. Hope you like this Bobbiana for this week. But anywho, let's get into this review. So the episode begins with Kiki's daughter, uh, I think her name was Kiera or Kira. I, I'm so sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. But the daughter left her pizza child in the windowsill. <laughs> and Kiki was like, so you going to eat it or you going to throw it away? She was like, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> right then and there, I was in. <laughs> because... Why would that baby eat that pizza that was left on that window seal? And I need to know how long it had been there. That's what I need to know. But it started off hilarious. So then her son, Kiever, we find out uh, has a girlfriend of four years named Takia who lived with them. She met him on the internet and they she came to visit him and she said she never left. Uh, I got a problem with that because where's your mama and them? And how is she just letting you go and stay with your boyfriend, parents? And Kiki, why is you let that little girl stay in your house? Like the whole episode, this little girl was more vocal than her biological kids. Like what is going on here? And I believe Kiever is the one that can sing, if I'm not mistaken. So he had a little song out in a duet with um Kiki, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, what's going on with that? And how old are they? Like, uh-uh, I'm not approving. No, 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 no. I'm calling CPS. No, mm -mm, she needs to go. She was doing too much for me. She was just way too vocal. And it was like, girl, are you buying toilet tissue? Are you bringing in call, uh, uh, groceries? Do you got some EBT? Do you got some uh, cash benefits? Like, what is going on? I need answers. So, Kiki is married to her third husband, Zachariah. And she said he is a good man, Savannah, honey. And the kids love him. They spend, He spent time with the kids. And um, she says that she's known him ever since she was a child. They went to uh, church together and everything. And then they reconnected with each other when they became adults. And out of all the husbands, he seemed like he a good man. You know, I like the last one, but she said he hadn't worked a job in 10 years. And I'm like, what? And what this one do? Like, do he got a job? Because I ain't seen him go to work yet. Like, I need answers. Okay. So, Kiki's 11th child, Kaziah, has a genetic order. And that baby on a feeding tube, oxygen tank, and so much more, and so many medications. And he's been in the hospital. And she has been a nervous wreck. She misses her baby and everything. But the doctor calls her and lets her know that he can come home. So we then meet one of her other kids and his nickname is Poopy. So that's what I'm gonna call him, Poopy Child. And he is fabulous. Obviously he is gay. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Honey, that wig was laid, had his nails done. I was like, okay, you might be my favorite. So he was the one that had cancer at one point and Obviously, he's beating it, thank God. And I was like, it seemed like it was another baby that had cancer, but it was him? He was the one that had cancer? Like, I just remember that baby being little, little. Like, and it was like maybe a few years ago, but he's a young man. Like, I was shocked by that, but he's doing great. Um, So Kiki gathers the whole, inf the whole entire family into the living room and announces that she's recording a new album with an old record label that she used to be signed to and the kids are just like okay <laughs> like you about to put out another oldie but goodie but all right girl okay congratulations so kiki basically was like you know your little brother coming home and she needs help with him because she got to go to the studio she got to work because she got a whole sloth of people to feed and the kids weren't really excited about the news, nor were they, anybody was jumping to say, okay, I'll help with the baby. So she gets annoyed and was like, all right, I'll just take him to the studio with me with all of that stuff. Okay. And she get up and she walks off and she's upset and she starts to cry. And the kids go and console her and was like, you know, we're just scared 
to watch him by ourselves. Like it's a lot. And I can get that. Like, cause if anything happened, God forbid. And like, that's just a lot to be putting on these kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, she is going to need help and she does have to step up. But I'm like, where the daddy going to be that he couldn't watch the baby? Like, is he going to be at work? Like what's going on? I needed more context when it came to that situation. So, um, but wait a minute, y'all. It was poopy when she said that, uh, she would just take the baby with her to the studio. This little ignorant nigga going to talk about some, they got a lot of plugs. And Kiki just looked at him like, if these cameras wasn't on, I would drag you by your lace front, baby. I couldn't believe that little boy said that. But they laughed about it, but still. So um, Kiki Mama Lorna arrives and she sits down and talks to her daughter. And she was like, I have never seen you this emotional ever. Like, it's obvious you're going through postpartum. And you need to fix your relationship with your manager, Andre, because y'all ain't been speaking. And Kiki says she not talking to him because she felt like he wasn't there for her when she needed him most. And she says she won't talk to him unless he come to her house. And I'm like, why, why he got to come to your house? Like, what, what the house situation got to do with anything? But okay, girl, okay. It's obvious that she's going through a lot. She's stressed out. Any per person would be in her predicament. She got a basketball uh family <laughs> a basketball litter of kids a husband manager mama uh one of her kids girlfriend living with her a sick baby a career like that's a lot of stress on anyone so i can sympathize with where she coming from but hopefully at this point she stopped having kids because you wouldn't be this stressed out lady if you wouldn't be having kids like you a cat in heat like what's going on like kids are a blessing and if you can take care of them wonderful but you can't be one of those parents that want to have all these kids and then having your kids parent the kids with you like they didn't ask for their siblings to be born this was a decision that you made you know what i'm saying so like i feel for her but she gotta understand that Everybody else's life goes on. You the one that decided to have all these children, like, ma'am. So, um, while she talking to her mama, one of the kids come upstairs, one of the little girls talking about some wide farting in her face. <laughs> and Kiki and the mama was like, girl, well, that's what happened with your brothers. And Kiki go tell the little girl, go fart back in his face, go eat some eggs and then <laughs> back in his face. I was like, them kids gonna have pink eye, but I would have told my kids the same thing. Like that tickled me. One thing about Kiki is I love her family. They are hilariously funny. Like that's a reality show within itself. Just being in that house with the cameras rolling. Like you don't even need storylines because it's so much going on. So after that, Andre, her manager has a party because he's closed on his home and Kiki's not there. So, he pulled, I think it was his sister aside and tells her, uh, his sister, what happened between him and Kiki. He said that they were going to a party and Kiki said she didn't know if she wanted to go because the person who was throwing it made her feel uncomfortable. So they, I guess, worked it out and decided she was going to come. She didn't call Andre back saying her husband, Zachariah, getting on her nerves because he like, if, why would you go somewhere if this person make you uncomfortable, like they don't make no sense. And so Andre was like, well, your husband is right. And so Kiki felt like he was agreeing with Zachariah. I'm like, if that's the story, that's crazy. Like what? <laughs> I had to rewind it back. Like, am I in the twilight zone? Like, huh? Like that's common sense. If somebody make you uncomfortable, you don't want to be around them. Why go? Like, what else was he supposed to say? It ain't about no siding with nobody. It's just common sense. But we all know Kiki to be very emotional. She's a very emotionally stunted person. She, um, she's, she's a lot to deal with. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's because she was the only child, how she was raised, but she's very spoiled. She's very dramatic. And you already know going in, dealing with a person like her that, 
you don't know who you gonna get at what what point. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is when you deal with a person like that. It's either you gonna deal with them or you're not. Okay. So if that's the reason why she got upset, then I'm with Andre. Like, girl, what? Like that don't even make sense. But um, he wonders. No, he tells the sister, you know, even if you're upset with me, you can't let that interfere with business. And I mean, I agree. Like he said, he, her manager, her stylist, her therapist, her chef, her, uh, everything. Like he does everything under the sun for her. And he says that, you know, he puts so much into her career and that he believes in her career more than she does. And at this point he feel like he needs to invest that into himself. And I was like, oh baby, <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have had this argument that y'all had or this falling out tell you that because, honey, you can't be pouring everything into everybody and not pouring it into yourself, honey, okay? Because if she ain't worried about her career like that, then you shouldn't be worried about her career like that. You need to do your job, and that's it. Ain't no extras, you know what I'm saying? And then with the back and forth with y'all getting into it, then you're back cool, like, girl, I ain't got time for all that. Uh-uh, no. So we then find out that Kiki had a breakdown. Uh, while the cameras were down, but one of the producers ended up catching it on a phone, a cell phone, but it was obvious that that person was doing it without her knowledge or consent because it was like they was hiding it like under like they arm or whatever, trying to like make it seem like they was on a cell phone or something like looking down at it. And I was like, obviously she's seen the first episode at this point. And I know she probably felt some type of way that they were filming it in a inconspicuous way like why do that you know what I'm saying because it's like is anything sacred like the cameras were down for a reason like ask me if I want this to be filmed you know what I'm saying don't be doing that behind my back and I'm having a genuine vulnerable moment with you all see that's why I couldn't do reality television because I've been to slap somebody so Kiki was just saying to her husband in production you know, I give every piece of me to everybody to where I forget about me and I'm sick of it. I have given Andre so much control over me and it feels like he's taking advantage of it to a degree sometimes. And we don't know Andre. We don't know their relationship to agree with her or not. But if that's how she feels and something needs to be done with that, you know what I'm saying? Because he's your manager, but he's not your owner. You know, he works for you at the end of the day. And that's why... It becomes increasingly difficult when you work with somebody and y'all become friends because the lines get blurred and people have expectations or their feelings get hurt. And then they like, well, I'm your friend, but it's like, no, you're my boss at the same. I mean, you're my employee at the same time and you can't get, you know, get your feelings in a certain thing. It's just a big line that you have to be careful not to cross. Um, and then as far as her saying, she give a lot to everybody and forget about her. I mean, obviously you give a lot to everybody when you got a whole Olympic team in your house, lady, like you have no choice, but to continue to give and give and give because you're a mom. And once again, you decided to have all of these children. It's only one of you and one of, you know, the father and they other daddies or whatever the case may be like. I don't, I mean, you complaining and everybody has the right to have a little mental breakdown, but it's like, girl, this is your reality. And I don't want to see this time later on this year, you popping up with another pregnancy photo. Like, girl, like with all, you know, having sick babies and stuff, it's time for you to like stop at this point. Like enough is enough is enough. So she talked about, you know, how stress she is on top of being a celebrity. Like I can't even go to the grocery store without people stopping me and ask me for a picture or whatever. And then if I say no, then they're going to go online and say I'm a B. And that's why I don't want to be no celebrity to that extent because people be forgetting you're a regular person. You just got more money and more um, notoriety than they do. But we the same person <laughs> at the end of the day. And everybody don't feel like being bothered all the time. People be going through stuff just because they're a celebrity don't mean that their lives are perfect. You know what I'm saying? So I know that has to be very stressful because you got to be on point at all times when you walk out the door. You know what I'm saying? And now with social media, you do one thing or you make somebody mad because you don't want to take a picture. Then they go online saying you a B and video recording you and all. It's like, it's a lot. So... Kiki goes to get her baby, uh, Kaziah, from the hospital with her mom and her husband to bring him home. Thank God he's home. Hopefully the baby is still doing good today. 
Um, and then we see Andre pop up at Kiki's house to talk. So they sit down and have a one-on-one conversation without her husband. He goes upstairs. So Andre was like, you know, I needed to make sure you were okay. And Kiki says, but I'm not okay. And that's the problem because I'm not okay. And I told you I wasn't okay. You were insensitive and was like, girl, it's okay. You're worried about nothing, but it's something to me. I have never not talked to you every day. Now, what she's saying is totally different from what he said they initially got into it for. You know what I'm saying? Like he talking about a party. She talking about, no, I'm telling you my mental health is bad and you acting like, oh girl, okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like two totally different things. And so, um, Andre agreed that like, yeah, we talk every day. Like it's crazy that we have not been talking. So Kiki says, and that ish let you know how hurt I am. Like it should have let you know how hurt I am. That should let you know what state I am in. I'm dealing with postpartum depression, stress, and depression from the baby being in the hospital. I'm depressed because I feel like I don't have any freedom and that I'm stuck in this house. I feel like I'm stuck in my life. And ooh, that one, ooh, that one where she said, I feel like I'm stuck in my life. I felt that. I felt that we've all been there where you just feel like you're at a crossroads, at a dead end. You don't know what to do. But once again, you've made this bed, Kiki, you know what I'm saying? And you got to lie in it, my love. You know, you stuck in the house because you got 11 children of all varying ages. No, you can't just rip and run the streets. You can't just get up and go like you want to. You have children that you have to take care of. Like, I don't, I don't really know what else to say, really. So, but I, I felt bad for her when she said she feel like she's stuck in her life. And even though she made this bed, it doesn't negate her mental health. And she does need to work on her mental health, go to therapy or whatever. She does need a break. You know what I'm saying? She should be allowed to take a break. You know what I'm saying? That the husband and maybe her mom help her or maybe she hire a nanny or something. I don't know. But everybody does deserve a break and some me time just to decompress. That's for anybody. So she says, and when I come to you, even if I'm wrong, just for a second, you could just be like, I don't care if you're wrong. I'm here and I got you and you just won't do it. All valid points, all valid points. And then Andre in his confessional says, we are on a roller coaster going up and down, up and down because she's in her feelings. Sometimes I'm tired. I'm tired of wearing the seatbelt. I have to put the seatbelt on every day because I don't know what the Kiki ride is going to be. And once again, that's what I said. When you dealing with somebody like that, you have to go into every day not knowing who you're going to get and what type of attitude you're going to get from that person. So you have to then decide, is this a person that I want to mentally deal with or befriend on a daily basis? Basis. So Andre, just like she made her bed, you've made your bed. And at the end of the day, if this is not suiting you, if it's not making you happy, if this is stressful, you have the right to walk away and just be her friend and not her manager. So that way you don't have to deal with her on an everyday basis. You know what I'm saying? So um, Andre was like, for me, I just wanted you to communicate that. And Kiki says, but I always feel like I communicate, but this time I didn't want to because I'm like, maybe if I don't communicate, he will see how deep and serious this is for me this time. So Andre says, I've been with you so long, Kiki, and I'm tired of seeing you going through things. I'm tired of you calling me with the same thing. Now, mind you, when he's saying this, he's trying to choose his words very carefully, but tell his truth. But you can tell like he was very nervous and walking on eggshells, trying to make sure like he didn't really like offend her, offend her. And yeah, it can become very tiresome hearing somebody complain about this, this, that, and the third when they're not making any changes but also you have to be concerned with somebody saying I'm tired and they're crying out for help. You know what I'm saying? You just can't dismiss that, you know? So Andre says, and he, um, I'm sorry. So Kiki says, so that means it's me, right? If it's a cycle, then it has to be me. And here she goes. I feel like <clears throat> she was playing a victim, but also trying to get clarity, like by saying like, you blame me. For this, like, is that what we doing? And also, I felt like she was playing the victim card. So Andre was like, I don't know. And then Andre and his confession was like, for some reason, Kiki can't have an adult conversation. It becomes a whole production. 
So Kiki over here, her husband on the steps, eavesdropping. So he come downstairs and trying to say his piece. And she was like, we don't need you in our conversation. We can handle this. Like, ain't no point in you eavesdropping. You, if that's the case, you might as well just be sitting right here. Baby Zachariah said, with all due respect, shut up. <laughs> And I was like, that's the type of energy she needed her life. Somebody to tell her to shut up because ain't nobody about to baby you, little girl. Because that's exactly what people do. They baby you and they coddle you and they don't check you about yourself. So I know it's probably people online like, oh my God, I can't believe he told her to shut up. And blah, blah. No, she needed to be told shut up because she do too much. Okay. And she is very dramatic. Okay. And hopefully he talks some sense into both of them because it's obvious they have a great friendship and a love there. But I feel like they're not meant to work with each other anymore in a business sense. They need to choose business or friendship. They can't do both anymore moving forward. But that's my review on Kiki Wyatt's World, the series premiere. I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. It was a really good episode. I think the season's gonna be really, really good. I'm loving the family. I think they're super funny. I think we're gonna get a balance of funniness and drama. So y'all let me know down below in the comment section what y'all thought about the episode. I'm gonna give Kiki Wide's World series premiere episode, I'm gonna give it a B minus. It was good. It was good. I'm looking forward to seeing how everything else is gonna pan out. But let's talk about it all down below in the comment section. You guys make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.